if we go to your homework, yeah, if we go to your homework, I think last week homework. Right. Let's look at something 3D. Okay. So let me let me download this. Right. So this is last week's homework. Right. So you can see, right? Where is the in plane now? Yes or no? Right. So if I'm going to draw element B, right? I'm going I'm going to follow the same transformation. Okay. So x, y, and z. I'm I'm, I'm going to copy this diagram. Okay, I'm going to copy this diagram. And I'm going to come here. Right. And paste. Bear with me. Right. Right. So now we have element A and element what? B. Right. So I'm going to follow uh, the transformation. Okay, I'm going to follow the yeah, transformation. So the transformation is this is our x, this is our y, and this is our z, right? So if we were to construct element A, right, element A looks like this. Okay, it has a slightly curved surface. Fine, I'll do the, I'll, I'll draw the curve. Okay. So if we were to label, so the in plane is your what? This is your in plane, and this is your x y plane. Which is your what? In plane. Okay. The rest are all your what? Out of plane. Can you see that? Okay, then if we look at element B, right now element B look this way. Okay, so this is our element B. So our in plane is on this surface, and now our in plane is our YZ plane. And oh, come on, Eugene. Our YZ plane, and this is our in plane. Can you see that? Okay, it's very obvious now. Yes, sir. You, I mean, I, 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 I did not teach this then because I was focusing on what? How to analyze combined loading. So now you know, okay, what is in plane and what is out of plane. Okay. So now it's very, you, as I said, you guys have seen it, but you guys did not know it yet. Okay, so if you look at all your homework for last week, okay, you, you can look at the, the, the element now, you can tell. Okay. Okay, so since now you all know what right. is uh, what is in plane, what is our plane, and you know how to label the x, x, uh, stress x, stress y, and the shear. Okay, now we are going to construct a, construct a full 3D element with the associated stresses. Okay. Uh, so now, yes. I, a quick question. If the tube is not hollow, if it's a uh, solid, what is your element A and B? Element A and B still look the same. But like okay. when you draw the element A and B, you draw the thickness. Yeah, this thickness is 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 arbitrary. Oh. It's not dependent on the thickness. Okay. Okay. But you don't draw a cube. You don't draw it bigger than your in plane. Okay. Like that's, what I mean is, a, if it's if it's solid. How? Yeah, you, you 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 don't you don't draw an element like this. Okay, you don't draw an element like this. Oh. Okay. okay? You don't you don't draw an element like this at all. Okay. Oh. So okay. even the 
radius is larger than the element. Your in place is still the surface. Yeah. OK, thanks. The reason why is because that is the all these elements are in fact what? OK, in real life, what is all these elements? They are strain gauges to measure your stresses. Okay, so in, in, in real life, you, you, you put, so let's say in, in, in real life, I'm going to copy this, right? In real life, what is this element in real life? So in real life, right, I'm going to zoom in. You put what? Uh, this is not big enough, okay? So let's say at A, okay, so I, I, I blow up, this is at A, okay? Okay, you put strain gauges. So, 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 no, this is not. So, you put, yeah, you put strain gauges. Okay, so you put strain gauge. Okay, so this is strain gauge one. And then you put another strain gauge. So this strain gauge one measure the stresses in the x direction or the strain in the x direction. This measure the strain in the what? Y direction. Okay. So from here, that's how you determine. Okay. So you get stress x is equal to Young's modulus multiplied by strain in the x direction. Okay, so they are all, in fact, what? Strain gauges. You know what strain gauge is, right? So strain gauge, what, what does strain gauge mean? Strain gauge are sensors that its resistance increase when there is a change in uh, geometry, okay, and they are very sensitive. So when there's a when there's a resistant change, Okay, voltage will change. So we measure the voltage. Okay, so we measure the voltage related to what strain? Are we are we clear? Okay, so all these are devices. Okay, are sensors. So if you go to look into Google, you just type strain gauge. It's basically a resistor. Okay, so that is what we mean by an element. Okay. Uh, are we clear? Okay. Right. So now I've I have described our stresses. Now we are going to look into a 3D element. Now. Okay. So if we look into a 3D element, so this is my transformation. Let me zoom out. x y z okay so this is our 3d element maybe to some of you this look more like a cube i better do that So if we were to label this, right, this will be our stress X. This will be our stress Y. And over here, this will be our stress Z. Okay. So in 3D, you have six components. Now we are labeled three. Okay. And then the next one over here, this is shear. 
the intersecting plane is x, the shear stress is in the y direction. And over here, this is our shear in the y in the plane intersecting the y axis x. Okay. And then we have another another shear. So over here, this is our shear intersecting plane is x. The shear stress is in the z direction. And over here is shear intersecting plane is z and it's going to x direction. And we have one more. Okay. The last one, last two pair is this is our shear z going in the y direction. And then finally, we have our shear intersecting plane is y and this is in the z direction. So always, right, always, this has to be satisfied for equivalent situation. So, so for equivalent or equilibrium, okay, where shear xy must be equal to shear yx, shear xz must be equal to shear zx, and shear yz must be equal to shear zy. Then I'm going to introduce you to a new term. It's what we call a plane stress condition. Okay. So you'll see this very often. Okay. They'll say that this is a plane stress analysis or this is a plane stress condition. Okay. So it's not just this course. Later on, when you do finite element, you'll, you'll see this term, you'll do your structure steel design, you'll see this term also. So what do we mean by plane stress condition? So condition number one, is where stress X and stress Y, okay, is not equal to zero, stress Z is equal to zero. Okay, condition number two, is stress x and stress z is not equal to zero, but stress y is equal to zero. Now you'll see the trend, okay? <laughs> and then the third one, is stress y and stress z is not equal to zero, where well, stress x is equal to zero. Okay, so that is what we mean by plane stress condition. How is this useful for you? Later on, when we do 3D mold circle, you'll see it very useful. Okay, 2D, you don't have to see it yet. Okay, 2D, what is more important is what we call in plane, and what we call out of plane is more important. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to relate most uh, the element to mole circle, right? Like now as we speak, you all know how to calculate stress X, right? When you look at stress X, oh yeah, I remember that formula, yes or no? When you all look at shear, ah oh, yes, I also know that formula, yes or no? Right, so when we look at those, you know, you know all those formulas now, okay? So the next thing that uh, we are going to do is we are going to look at how to relate. Okay, so next thing is how to relate. Oh, my mouse ran out of battery. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to relate. Okay, we are going to relate. Uh, elements 
two more circles. Okay. So our again construct our 